Collaboration, hiring, investing, and giving. How to see who we really are. It's always the first step. Meet Wonderloop. It's not just about what you do, but about who you are and what you want for the future. This is a platform for meeting new contacts through personal introductions you record on your phone. It's the next natural step in social media. It goes beyond photos, giving a real understanding of what every user is like as a person. Meet our video profiles. There's no photos, no long bios, just video profiles. Introduce yourself to a global community in the span of 20 seconds. Introductions. Reach your goals and dreams through the introductions you make. Give back to someone by introducing them to your connections. Search. Find people by name, location, industry and skills using our powerful search feature. Our vision? Creating a search engine of what life is about. People. The world is ready for a real connection. Thank you so much. So uh, I thought it's a women's only conference. Finally, I get to wear whatever I want. I'll be like half naked under a dress. And then I forget it's live stream on the internet. <laughs> so not only the tech people who sometimes we fail, we too. So uh, first slide, please. <laughs> oh, there it is. Cool. So. Um, I'm not going to do a regular pitch. I'm uh, going to do the story of Wonderloop uh, and how somebody from a small town, this is Christian Sand in Norway, uh, how somebody decides that she wants to see every person in the world. Um, it started when I was 14. I uh, lost my family after a car accident and I uh, lived alone. And I spent most of my time on the internet. The good thing was that I learned a lot. Uh, I dove myself into technology thinking, what does it take to connect with the world? And I became one of those early pioneers in social media in Norway the one who knew everything about the internet, uh, everything about social media, started my own company when I was 24, uh, had a great career, so to speak. But I always knew, because of this woman, <laughs> that I wanted to not only talk about the technology, I wanted to be the one that created it. And some of my happiest moments when growing up was watching Oprah when she gave away an opportunity to somebody else. When she gave away a scholarship to somebody and you could see their life change, that's the moment I wanted to happen for everybody. And after that, I thought, well, Oprah's team is, of course, vetting people before they go on stage, right? But they're filtering people on who comes on the show. But what if we can see everybody in the world? Can't we just all give then? Because if we can see the people we give to, it doesn't matter where they live. We have it on our mobile. So after sitting and watching like 2,000 episodes of Oprah, being alone in my house, the show ended, which for me was like a personal crisis. And everybody made fun of me, right? Because it's just a show. Uh, but for me, it was the person who raised me. Uh, and when the person who raises you leaves, it's kind of a small crisis. So I thought, well, this is, this is now or ever. So I headed out. This is, I discovered a conference called DLD. And the conference was way too expensive for, for me at that time. And I begged somebody at DLD to like give me a student young prize, and they did. I booked myself into uh, the cheapest hotel room in Munich, 15 minute cab ride to get here, uh, being so jealous of the people staying at the Bayerischer Hof, and 
looking at these people and these amazing technology entrepreneurs, and I thought, I will be on that stage one day with, that, with this vision I have of having everybody in the world on a video. And running around there, I had only a business idea. I didn't have a company, I didn't have a product, I didn't have funding, and if anybody of you knows how it is with these people who only have an idea, you're not treated very well. Uh, so I was just super determined to be back at DLD with a product and with a company. The DLD conference uh, brought me also to Davos, which brought me also to Sean Parker, um, which then brought me to him launching a company called Airtime. Um, Airtime was a video startup well, if you call a $12 million funded company a startup, but still, it was, a, it was an idea of renewing the chat roulette. Many people see airtime today as a failure. It's not when the entire industry is learning so much. And what we learned, I felt, was that very few people want to be on live video. So I went on to pivot the product into video profiles and head it out into the world which I would not have done had I not attended DLD, actually, which is kind of crazy to think about. So I ended up in Silicon Valley. I um, had this life-changing moment also there, standing under a satellite, which is what gives us internet. It gives us the ability to send text messages and emails. And yes, nobody looks good in the security white dress, by the way, uh, but it was a hallelujah moment for somebody in tech. So I went home to Norway, my hometown, with tons of excitement, and I applied for government, or government funding, which is what you do in Norway. Norway does have a lot of money. And uh, it got denied. And the reason it got denied was it said I was too ambitious. It was too crazy, basically, uh, of a product. So um, I went to my bank, and I said, uh, I need $100,000 because I'm going to start a technology company. And they said, OK, well, uh, how much will you make? And, they, and I said, nothing, because I'm going to be building the company. They said, no, I changed banks. Uh, I got the funding, <laughs> and I headed out to start building the product. I hired developers, and I started doing the product, and the next DLD, I was running around with a sketch of the app, uh, and also blogging about how DLD uh, changed my life, basically. So after the second DLD, back to working some more, the app is now, was now at this stage where it's more developed. I decided to head to New York, basically move a year to New York to launch the company, and uh, ended up speaking at the UN about my vision and the iPhone app, which for me was a great moment because you kind of left Norway when nobody believes in you, and then all of a sudden you're at the UN, which was a hallelujah moment. And then finally the day was there, the app is in the app store. It, uh, we had, of course, the mandatory launch party with a cake, and we had the launch press. Uh, this was the most press any Norwegian consumer tech startup had ever gotten. Uh, it also, and also the Norwegian press got a hold of it. And for the first time, we saw users tweeting that they had met for coffee, not knowing each other before, but they were now sitting there for the first time because they met in Wonderloop. Uh, which is a very, very weird moment when you actually see people uh, using the product, which is, of course, what we want to scale and what we want to have everybody do. So we went on to raise money. Uh, we've raised even more. We raised half a million dollars by now, including, finally, the Norwegian government, because uh, I would not rest on getting the government and funding, not because of the money, but because Norway not having any consumer tech startup. I really, really wanted to have a Norwegian stamp on it. So what we're working on now is basically 
figuring out how to be the new generation for the younger people who will never use LinkedIn, basically, who will never find LinkedIn interesting. And we are doing it with teen stars. And teen stars is quite an undiscovered area. Uh, I have a friend who's French, and his name is Jérôme Jarret. I met him before he became a Vine star, and his conversion rate in social media is bigger than Madonna, it's bigger than Lady Gaga. And why, right? Because when Madonna has 17 million followers, and Jerome has 1.3 on Facebook, he has 6 million on Vine, by the way, why does he have more likes, right? And it's because of the teens. It's because of the teens use mobile extremely more actively than what we do. So, We've also looked at Snapchat, and what Snapchat did was to take down time for messaging, right? It's not about the photo disappearing, everybody thinks that, but uh, in my opinion, is that it's quicker. And what we want to do with Wonderloop is we want to make it quicker to see a person in 10 seconds on a video. So even though LinkedIn uh, also is starting to experiment with video profiles, we of course think we will might be much cooler, <laughs> and also going on mobile. So I'll show you uh, one video profile. That please. Hi, my name is Julie. I'm from Norway. I'm taking a master's degree in social communications. I love to travel and to meet new people. And my dream is to work within a company that wants to change the world. So after watching, seeing this girl on the app, I was like, well, that is kind of what we want to do. And we hired Julie, because I thought I cannot tell companies that this is the future of hiring if we, as a startup, is not using it to hire ourselves. So Julie is today uh, with the company. We're working on exciting things. Uh, and today, th this year, I was back in Davos, uh, back at DLD, uh, and I'm actually on stage right now. So this is kind of the moment where I say, oh, whoa. <laughs> I am, I am back, uh, and uh, it's a super, super great honor. Uh, I don't think I would be here without DLD, and uh, I hope you test out the app. The app is down today. We're building a new version, which is coming out later this week, so maybe the DLD will be sending out a link later. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you.